Hey everyone, as I'm sure many of you have noticed, we recently hit 100,000 subscribers, <laughs> which is a huge milestone for us. You know, when we hit the road three years ago and started making videos, there's no way. I, that I didn't think at all Never. that we Never, would be at 100,000 <laughs> subscribers in three years. Hitting this milestone is an awesome thing for so many YouTubers out there, but we definitely couldn't have done it without you guys. Your interest in our channel, you guys encouraging us to keep going, telling us, hey, I know of this cool place to visit, so we write it down and we go and visit eventually. Your guys' support and you guys subscribing to us and showing interest in what we do has helped get us to this point. And so we want to give you guys a massive thank you for being so supportive and so awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Without you, Fate Unbound wouldn't even exist. Your encouragement and your gratitude towards the videos that we put out for you guys has helped make it so easy to create awesome videos for you guys. We truly and honestly love what the, what we do. We love exploring. We love sharing all of the places we explore with you guys. The ups, the downs, the <laughs> sad things, the happy things, everything. We love sharing with you guys. And you guys telling us how much you love our stuff is so encouraging. And we hope that eventually, someday, fingers crossed, I don't know if we'll ever get there. Maybe we'll hit the next milestone for YouTubers, which is what, uh, five, 500,000? Million? Mil 10 million? 500 million billion subscribers. Yes. Right? What, what, how long will that take, like two more years? <laughs> you guys helping encourage us has made it so that we know that we will keep doing this for long into the future. And now to address the elephant in the room, which I know all of you are curious about, is David's arm sling. How you doing over there, David? Well, you know, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still breathing. Uh, I'm still alive. So, you know, I'm doing all right, all things considered. Your but arm is at least still attached. It's still attached and didn't <laughs> rip off. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, basically what happened is I fell. I had a pretty nasty spill. I landed directly on my shoulder. And we thought I broke something. We were like, okay, mm. something is definitely broken because if I moved my shoulder at all, it's this sharp, intense pain. Uh, and it happened at night, unfortunately. So we had to wait till the following morning um, to go to an urgent care facility. And, uh, you know, the doctor checked me out. They did some x-rays and thankfully nothing's broken. The doctor said it is a separated shoulder, which apparently isn't as bad. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, two, about a two week heal time, she said. So happened three days ago, right? Yeah. yeah, so I'll be back to normal in no time. You'll see, you guys will see me wearing this a couple videos and then I'll be gone and I'll be back to normal. Yeah, I think a separated shoulder is a, it's a tear in the tendon. Yeah, it's like a sprain in the, she said my, the tendon that connects my um, scapula, is that the, the wing bone in your back, to my collarbone is sprained. It's like a sprain, so yeah. I'm okay. Now it looks I'll like live. you've got a wing. You got a little wing right yeah, there. Yeah, a little wing going on. I, I'm not gonna flap it though, cause that, ow. That would probably hurt, yeah. So on the video of us celebrating the milestone of 100,000 subscribers with you guys, we thought what better topic than to cover our favorite things about full-time RVing. The reasons we started doing this in the first place, you know, the whole switch from our old lives to our new lives. And for me personally, my number one favorite thing about full-time RVing is that I get to live in incredible places. Wherever we go, wherever we tow our trailer to, that is where we live. We're not just camping in these places. We've got our whole home with us. My wife, our pets, everything we own is here. So we live in the places that we go and stay at. Like right now, we are on top of a mountain in the Cascade region of Washington State. And we have one of the most incredible views we've ever seen. We've got the 
got the Cascade Mountains directly behind us. You know, there's a lake right over there. Oh, sweetie, don't lick my arm. Don't push my arm. Oh, she doesn't know. She's she doesn't know. Hide. I know. She just wants some attention. I, <laughs> I wish I could tell you because yeah, she gets she gets pretty excited and wants to play, and I'm like, okay, okay. Gotta be easy. Gotta be easy, be pup. Easy. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we, man, it's it's just incredible. This is the reason that I got into full-time RVing in the first place. When I first heard about this whole crazy idea, I saw these other people. <laughs> whoa, that got close. <laughs> that paw got close. I saw, you know, all these other people that were doing it, living in these breathtakingly beautiful places, mm -hmm. living in the middle of the woods and, you know, the national forest. And that's, I was like, man, I want to do that. I'm tired of living in the suburbs, even though like we lived in a really good part of town. It was a nice part of yeah, town. Yeah, we had yeah. a nice house and everything, but man, it was like you only get one life, and so you better do with I it know. what you want. Yeah, so you better I, not regret not doing the things you want to try. So yeah, I wanted to live my life in epically awesome places, or even just like in the forest, like surrounded by trees, you know, alone with you. It's just like that's how I want to live my life. That's what I want to do, and. You know, the, the last three years uh, on the road as full-time RVers has not disappointed. Um, it, it's, it's lived up to everything that I've wanted in that respect. And, you know, I wake up in the morning, I step out my front door, and I just look around, and I'm just like, yeah, we did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. That actually leads me to my next point, which is my favorite thing about full-time RVing. Which, yes, living in awesome places is amazing, not discounting that at all, but my favorite part about full-time RVing is that I get to spend essentially every waking and sleeping moment with my best friend in the entire world. We get along amazingly, we are literally best friends, and on top of all of that, when we worked jobs and we had to go into work, and, you know, spend eight or nine hours a day either commuting or working in an office, then the pets were alone at home. And I know that a lot of pets stay home. A lot of people have, you know, nine to five jobs Monday through Friday, but we always felt so bad that they were alone that mm -hmm. entire time. And being able to just be with them all the time is so nice. And for those of you that have you know, families on the road. Well, we, we know plenty of people that have kids on the road yeah, that absolutely. get to spend all this time with their kids, whether they're homeschooling them or they just, when their kids come home from school, they're there. And it's so amazing, all this quality time that you get to spend with, you know, your best friend, your spouse, your kids, maybe your pets if you really, if they mean a lot to you. But it's, it's the thing that, really keeps me going in what we do. I couldn't ever go back to having to work a nine to five job in someone else's building at some place yeah. away from my best friend. Like I, yeah, if, I love it. If you think about it, um, the amount of time that we are going to get to spend together is at least double of of most yeah, people. Yeah, because most people spend like 8 to 5 yeah. or like 9 to 5. So we somewhere. so like living this lifestyle, we get to live essentially two lifetimes together. Oh, that's you ever so thought, sweet. Aww. Have you ever thought of that? No. I I've just thought of that for the first time ever. That's That's awesome. That's pretty rad. Guys, he's really cute. <laughs> he's so sweet. Jenny already touched on this, but our pets are incredibly important to us. You know, we don't have children, like she said. So our pets are the closest thing to children that we have. And, you know, you're, you don't get as much time with your pets as you want. You know, their lives are so much shorter than ours. So getting that extra time to spend with them is an incredible blessing. Sweetie girl, sweetie, come here. This might be a bad idea. Come on, pup. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, we're okay. I helped guard the Oh. <laughs> I love you. Oh, yeah. she loves you yeah. too. Oh. Yeah, I love you. Aww. And I never regret all the extra time that I get to spend with this big lug right here. This big lug. She's the star of the show, you know. She's a great friend, a great companion, and it's 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 pretty special that we get all this extra time with her. And the cats. And the, and the bunnies. Yes. 
another thing that we love about full-time RVing is that we're now living off-grid with our house before we hit the road. We, we weren't living off-grid at all, mm -hmm. but we knew that in our travels and with our RV, we wanted to be able to live out in the middle of nowhere, like out in the desert, out in the forest, you know, far away from society and, you know, any utilities, surely. Mm -hmm. So we, we set up our trailer to be, you know, completely off grid to be able to carry enough water to handle, you know, two plus weeks out, um, to be able to gather its own power from the sun so that, you know, we don't have to rely on hookups to have electricity and, you know, have plenty of propane. And it's, it's, it's just a really cool way to live, to be completely self-sufficient in those aspects. And you were able to install the solo yourself. Yeah. You, I mean, it's been a work in progress with the water situation we have. We just recently switched some stuff. We'll show that in a future video yeah. here. So we've got solar, we've got an expansion, like everything's always changing too. Like every year we'll like add something different. Like this year we got the expansion panel yeah. on top of that. And then uh, late last year we added the extra panel up top. It's just, it's always changing in order to fit our needs. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. But it's still completely off grid and we're still completely self-sustaining. Yeah. And like she said, that, that was a thought that, that was a thought that didn't occur to me is that, um, you know, I did all that myself and I'm very much the type of person that when I put a lot of work into something, you know, I, I very much am able to take pride in it. And it's really cool, you know, seeing the solar panels up on the roof and being like, yeah, I did that. You know, it's, it's just really neat that like all of our energy that is collected and everything, you know, all these lights and our, our laptops, you know, all the electricity that powers our lives. We, I mean, you helped with the install too. We did that, you know? I mean, you did all the, like the technical work. I helped with the muscle, I guess. With yeah. My, with my muscle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which helps because if we have any issues, if, if something goes wrong, we just fix it mm -hmm. because we know how it works. And as opposed to like, if something goes wrong at, at your house, uh, sometimes there's only so much you can do. You may need to call an electrician. Mm -hmm. um, or a plumber. So, yeah. So like, it, we are completely self-sufficient and it's just really cool. There's a, there's a lot of pride that goes into that. And I mean, solar power, solar power is just so cool. You guys, we've got four solar panels up on the roof and they power everything. That's all we need. Yeah. And on top of that, whenever we decide to settle back down, if, if we're going to have a house or whatever, we're, we love off-grid living so much yeah. that we're going to do it there too. We're going to have a solar array, we might have wind power, we'll collect our own water and distill yep. it for drinking and all this stuff. We're going to have a little garden, all kinds of stuff. So like changing from living in a suburb where we had no form of off-grid living mm -hmm. to living in an RV where we are fully self-sustaining, it really makes me appreciate how much work has gone into us being able to live this way. Mm -hmm. And it it's we're both so full of pride in being able to do this that when we have a house that we move into eventually it just it has to be off -grid. oh yeah we're yeah we're hooked on off-grid living yeah we've yeah. we've talked like we fantasize sometimes we're like oh we're gonna have this huge solar array gonna have some you know <laughs> wind power and uh yeah i could go on and on but it's it's just a really cool way to live and knowing that like our carbon footprint the amount of fossil fuels we burn and everything is way lower than the average person just because we're not getting our power from from you know those sources it's all mm -hmm. from solar 100 percent you know we do have to fire up our generator every now and then but it's very infrequent it's very rare and even then at the very least we're burning propane which is a pretty clean burning fuel, all things considered. Yeah, and we have a diesel truck, but we don't drive very often. Yeah, we drive way less than the average yeah, like person. Once or twice a week. Yeah, is, and there's only the only time. There's only one vehicle too, yeah. as opposed to multiples. So yeah, it's we just, we really love off grid living, and this is how we're gonna live for the rest of our lives. RV house doesn't matter. Something I remember being concerned about before we hit the road was how little stuff we could take with us. And now that we've been on the road for three years, all of this stuff that I was scared that we wouldn't have room for or that we had to leave back at your parents' house, I was afraid that we would miss it or that we wouldn't be able to live our lives to the fullest without some stuff. But what has really opened my eyes up to like the minimalistic lifestyle is how 
convenient it is to have so little. I don't have to worry about random electronics that we buy because we just want an electronic because first of all we don't really have the room for it and second of all it's expensive and degrades over time and how often am I actually going to use it? Is it actually going to make me happy in the long run? I don't know. And then there are a lot of people that and not bashing people that have this or anything, but there are people that have a house, they have a boat, they have ATVs, and they have an RV, but because all we have is an RV and because we live in our RV, we truly are as minimalistic yeah. as we can possibly be in this. So it's really helped open my eyes to if we were to ever settle down in a house, we would probably continue living pretty minimalistic. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, all like all those things that Jenny was saying, you know, like having all the toys and all the stuff and like yeah, that is fun. And all those Definitely things are fun. fun, but they tie you down. Like they are, a, they can be a burden in many ways mm -hmm. because you have to maintain them. I mean, first of all, you got to pay to buy them in the first place, but then you got to maintain them. You got to insure them. And, uh, you know, it just takes time and money. And that just makes you so uh, less financially flexible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, f living a minimalist lifestyle is very freeing in the aspect that you don't have those burdens. And RV, like she said, we were actually really worried that we wouldn't have enough storage space mm -hmm. for everything that we would need, but we do. And yeah. it's really nice now, like, you know, going to the store, That's you're just- That's what I was just gonna say. It's so funny when I go to the store and I'm just like, this is really cool. If I had a house, I would totally buy this right now because that's how cool yeah. I think it is that I want this. But, but because no, I don't no have room. any room for yeah. it, I'm not going to buy it. Yeah, and we save a ton of money doing that. And it really helps being able to continue this lifestyle. Um, you know, if, if we were just like buying things willy-nilly, that would be very stressful financially. For sure. Yeah, and like you said, even if we were to uh, go back to living in a house you think we would still continue being minimalists. Probably. And I, yeah, I absolutely agree because the number one thing as far as that goes that living in an RV has done for us is we, we used to think that we would need this like massive house, like mm -hmm. 2,000, 2,500 square feet is Big what house. we wanted. <laughs> but we've been living in less than 200 square feet. I think it's like 180 square feet. I don't remember. For three years now. And we're totally happy doing it. So like, if we were ever to move to a house, there's no way we would need 2,000 square feet. It's just mm -hmm. absurd. So like the type of house we would be looking for, probably around 1,000 square feet. Yeah, definitely. And, and and that would feel like, that would feel massive to us. It'd feel like a mansion because it, it's five times bigger. Yeah, and then we'd have all the space that we needed to fill, which won't be hard because I do like shopping, but <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy shopping. Oh my gosh. But when we lived in our house, we had multiple closets and a whole spare room. And an full. attic and an attic full of stuff that we didn't need, that we didn't use, that we only saw once, once? or twice a year. Yeah. Or maybe just the day that we bought it or the day that we were gifted it and then it got put in a closet because we were never going to use it. Well, there were so many decorations that we had that we never put up. So I just know that whenever we settle down again, it's going to be one of those things where we're, we're going to have it in the, in the forefront of our minds when looking at something, do I actually do I need, need this? this? Yeah. Because we didn't used to do that. Another favorite of mine about full-time RVing is the ability to travel all over the country and see everything that America has to offer. And I can't tell you guys how many times I've been somewhere new and been like, just like mind blown because I had no idea that anything like this existed even. Like I, I before hitting the road, I lived a pretty stationary life like Fort Wayne, Indiana, Northeast Indiana, this tiny little section of the country was like the only place I had ever been. And so like anything that I knew that existed other than that, I had just seen on TV and, and some of the, some of the things we've seen, you never even saw before. On exactly. TV. So like Canyonlands National Park, Arches National Park and the entire Moab area, Joshua Tree National Park, like the Mojave National Preserve, like, you know, the sand dunes, the incredible sand dunes there. It's just like so many things that I, we, we get there and I'm looking at and I'm just like in awe, <laughs> like absolute awe that I just like, I had no idea. 
I did not know that anything like this existed and it's, it's just incredible. It's an incredible experience every time and there's so much more of the country that we haven't seen yet and it's uh, that's really exciting too because we've seen so much already we haven't gone up into canada yet no. and well we've never been to alaska yeah there are a lot of places that i'm aware that they exist like i know that glacier national park exists we've driven through the grand tetons once mm -hmm. uh i know that yellowstone national park exists but i have never spent an appreciable amount of time. First of all, I've never been to Glacier or Yellowstone, mm -hmm. and we only drove through the Tetons, so again, not a lot of time. And I can tell you that no matter how many times I've seen pictures yeah. of the Grand Tetons, I know. seeing That's them such in a person great... was utterly incredible. It was so breathtaking. Man, and like having, getting there at sunset, you know, with the, with the purples and the oranges <laughs> and just that incredible mountain range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like the same thing. Like I knew it existed and I've seen pictures of it, but when you see stuff like that in person, it's just so, in. Uh, you, I, it, it's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. I, w I was brought to tears. It was so beautiful and uh, just so moving, and I can I can never get enough of that. Mm. I I could I could see something like that every single day, and I would still just be like, "Oh my god, that is incredible!" So pretty. I know the one place that I really want to visit that I know that I've seen. There are pictures of me being there, <laughs> but I was too little to remember, and it's uh, the Grand Canyon. Oh, I have man. not been to the Grand Canyon Still since I was a tiny Canyon. little kid. I don't remember at all what it looks like. There are just pictures of me being there with my mom holding me or my grandma. I think I was with my grandma. I yeah. And so I know that I've been there, but I don't remember it in the slightest. And so I really am so excited to see it as an adult so that I can truly take it in and just appreciate the beauty that it's going to have to offer. We'll get there. Someday. We'll get there. This is hard to really place in an order of, of favorite things that I like about yeah. full-time RVing, but it is without a doubt amazing, and I'm so thankful that we get to do this because I like being warm. And that <laughs> yeah. is, and that you is, like being warm. I think I, I think despise you, being there. Cold. <laughs> you go, there you go. There, there's fewer ways to get her to complain and be crabby than to just make her two degrees too cold. <laughs> so being able to travel with the weather every year, whether it's springtime or it's the dead of summer, so we go up higher in elevation where it's more comfortable, or it's the middle of a freezing cold winter and we can be in Arizona or somewhere where it's nice and dry and warm and I can still wear shorts and a tank top outside. I don't know if I will ever be able to get enough of that. And even whenever we settle down, I know that we're going to deal with seasons and I'm not looking forward to that. So I know that we'll, we'll always we'll be probably, RVers. We'll still probably travel. We will when always the be bad. RVers. Yeah. <laughs> so like snowboarding is always a possibility. Yeah. Growing okay. So growing up in Northeast Indiana, every winter we would get intense snow, mm -hmm. and that's my entire life until what? When did we get the road? Twenty. I was twenty-seven. Twenty-seventeen. Yeah. So I was I was twenty-seven, right? Twenty-eight. Yeah, something like that. So twenty-seven, twenty-eight years snow every single winter and you got to deal with it and it's terrible you know it's kind of cool at first you're like oh the snow is Look, so first pretty snow of the season oh. you're excited for the and one then it just dumps snow. it all on you and then it's just a total pain so having the ability to just completely hit the skip button on winter <laughs> Oh man, it's awesome! Or even like the intense summers. So in Indiana, a lot of you might not know this, but Indiana summers hot. So if you've Humid. if you've ever been to Florida in the dead of summer, Indiana is basically the same. Yep. We are surrounded by Great Lakes. It is insanely humid. And the, the jet streams constantly not... bringing that mo that yep. moist air from the Great Lakes yep. down into Fort Wayne. Yep. And constant thunderstorms and tornadoes and all kinds of stuff. Like Indiana kind of sucks in the middle of summer. The weather's not the it's best. Not, it's not the best. And I remember when I was in high school, I had so many friends that would complain about the weather and they'd say, when I graduate, when I'm an adult, I'm going to move to Florida. I'm going to move to where it's, I'm going to move to where it's warm. Yeah. And then I visited Florida with my grandparents when I think I was 14 or 15, a couple of times. And every time I went there, I was like, this is no better. Great in the winter though. We were I've been there, there in the, the summer winter. though. I've been there in the winter. It's pretty nice in the winter. Yeah. 
But yeah, man, being able to head on down to Arizona, into Southern California, just on a whim, being like, okay, it's getting a little too cold, mm -hmm. let's head south. That and then has when been it fantastic. gets too hot there, like in Arizona, I think it's been getting up to like 112 degrees yeah. down there uh, a couple of days this summer so far. And being able to just be like, nope, I'm out of here, yep. and then leaving. <laughs> or, yeah, so like nice. do, like doing what we're currently doing. So we're, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's the middle of summer. Uh, it's hot in a lot of places. So where are we? We're all the way up north in Washington State on like literally on the literal top of a mountain to escape the warm temperatures. I mean, okay, it is a little chilly up here. You can see we're it's in a, sweats. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, it's a little colder up here than I It's been a cold snap. Tomorrow the high is 80. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. So even though we're at the top of a mountain, the high 80 degrees. 80, 80 degrees. Yeah. We're at like 4,200 feet or something. We're 40, somewhere 4, between 4 and 5. I actually think we're about 5. Oh, okay, so, so we're pretty up there. Yeah, and if you look around, all the trees are kind of like the uh, yeah, the like short, stunted subalpine range. Yeah. yeah, and we just came from an area farther down this mountain where it was pretty toasty on just like a seventy-three degree day. Yeah, you could wear shorts and a tank top outside just because. It was hot, like even that was hot, and tomorrow I'm so excited because it's 80 degrees! <laughs> yeah, the ability to travel with the weather, you just head, you look around for 75 and sunny, top notch. And I mean, even just like two hours east of here, it's in the 90s mm -hmm. right now because it's farther down and it's kind of considered desert area, so. It's Picking your weather, pretty awesome. Really nice. So those are our favorite things about full-time RVing. You know, the reason we started full-time RVing in the first place, made the plunge, that massive life change, and the reasons that we will be continuing to RV long in the future, we have no plans of stopping anytime soon. We love this. And the funny thing is that when we sat down to like talk about these and come up with these ideas, we were like, okay, let's cover five things. Let's do like our five favorite things. And then we just couldn't, we had to do six. And Jenny actually came up with a ton more and I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, whoa, okay, pump the brakes. <laughs> these are our favorite things. Like I know there's, there are so many other things that we love about doing this, that we love about full-time RVing, but you know, these are our six favorite things. And on this occasion, you know, hitting the milestone of 100,000 subscribers, again, you guys, we cannot thank you enough. Thank you for being a part of our lives, a part of Fate Unbound. Thank you for you know, enjoying our videos and encouraging us and just for everything. This, this milestone, this achievement is as much ours as it is yours. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts and you know, hopefully we are making videos for a very, very long time. And we have shared our favorite parts about full-time RVing with you guys, and we would love it if you shared with us your favorite things. Yeah, what are your favorite parts about RVing? Why do you guys RV? What, what gives you that drive to pack up the RV and head out? And if you aren't an RVer and you live vicariously through other RVers, what's your favorite thing that you've seen or your favorite place that you've seen someone go to? Yeah, but that's it for this video. Thank you guys again so much. And again, don't worry about this. It'll, it'll probably heal, it'll heal up in no it'll time. probably only be, be in like one more video. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two week heal all. time. That's it. And then I'll be right as rain. Hopefully. Cross my fingers. Cross my fingers. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.